Welcome to the Stay Paid Podcast, where we help agents and entrepreneurs master the latest business trends to unlock growth and create a life of freedom. Brought to you by Reminder Media. Welcome to Stay Paid. My name is Joshua Stike. And I'm Luke Acree. And before we bring on our guest today, we'd love it if you take a minute to subscribe to Stay Paid on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. If you're not already subscribed, while you're there, drop us a review. We will read it here on the show. Joining us this episode uh, without his partner today, Cody Smith from Acree Brothers Real Estate or Realty Team what up? in Pittsburgh, Virginia. Cody, what happened to Steven? You got Steven rid of him, you kicked him off the uh, team? Yeah. <laughs> you're, not, you're not hitting your metrics, Steven. No. Nah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he is at a KW Wealth Conference this weekend in Arizona. Nice. Awesome, man. Nice. Well, our superstar guest of today, we are super excited for this. Uh, he is Gino Blafari. Gino is a dynamic leader in the real estate landscape, holding an unparalleled reputation as an industry icon, having founded Intero Real Estate in 2002 and leading it to be one of the fastest organically growing companies in the history of real estate. Gino now serves as the CEO of Home Services of America, as well as chairman of Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. He's a respected thought leader, keynote speaker, and mentor, engaging audiences with his insights on business optimization and leadership. Gino, welcome to Stay Paid. Yeah, great being here, guys. That was a great introduction, too. Thank you for that. No, man, Josh has the best intros in the biz. That's what we've been told. Gino, yeah, man. Uh, I, I should, I, I got to subscribe to the show, guys. I mean, this, you guys are, uh, you're already impressing me in the first couple of seconds. So this is good. Hey, man. Well, thank you for that. I mean, it is truly an honor to have you on. We've had some amazing guests, of course, but I don't think we've had ever somebody of your caliber and what you've accomplished. And I don't say that lightly. I mean, it is pretty amazing. I've been following your career for a very long time. You know, people who follow us and listen to us, they know we've been helping in the residential real estate space for a long time. But to have someone like you who has built a really successful business and then gone on to lead, you know, one of the biggest real estate companies in the world, I think you can give us a lot of insight today. I would love for you to share a little bit of your journey um, and just give the audience a background for maybe those who don't know Gino that should, a little bit of your story, and then we can dive right in. Sure. Okay. That'd be great. And I'm happy to do that. And, I, you know, a lot of times when I'm talking to agents like that, I say something like, my story is really their story. Because in 1985, I started out as a realtor, um, knowing nothing about real estate, not owning a house, and with a $1 bill in my pocket. So if I could do it, anybody can do it there. But in any case, I worked for a really a high-end uh, company called Fox and Carscadden. And I struggled for those first six months to, to get to get anything going. In fact, if I had my own, my old Intero rule is if you didn't sell a house in your first six months, we let we let you go. So I would have been firing let myself. Go. Then, right? <laughs> um, but in any case, it clicked, you know, my my um uh, my, my mindset and, and and things like that. I studied so much stuff. It it clicked and I finally um did really well and, and ended up selling uh, lots of houses uh, that first year after the six month wait. And then about three years into that, my little league baseball coach called me up and he had a little company called Contempo Realty and he wanted me to be part of his company. And I made all these crazy realtor demands that realtors do. Um, now today with what we pay a realtor, they weren't even that big of demands, but I wanted to be a partner and all sorts of other things. And uh, he looked at it for like two seconds and um, signed it. And I thought, man, why would he, why in the world would he do that? But he did, I guess he knew what he was doing. We grew that company from about 65 agents to 650 agents. And in 1997, we sold um, that company to Coldwell Banker or Real, um, at the time it was called Sindan, but it's what, what is known now as um, Anywhere. So I had a okay. five-year non-compete. Well, they gave us the brand Century 21. I had the largest Century 21 in the world, and I had seven of the top 11 offices. And back then, Century 21 had like 6,500 offices. So that was a big deal. Um, three and a half years into that, we merged it into Coldwell Banker. I became a senior vice president for NRD, which was more of a national job. That was the national realty trust that um, Realogy got when they were buying all the independent companies, as you probably remember, and moving most of them to the brand of Coldwell Banker. Um, in five years, my non-compete was up. I thank them very much. I loved Bob Becker, my my um, our CEO at that time, but I was ready to do something different and thought I could do something different and started in tarot 
in in the end of 2002, like October, November of 2002. So in 2003, as uh, was mentioned in the introduction, Intero was the, actually the fastest organically growing real estate company. When I say organic, that means no mergers, no acquisitions, just one agent at a time that believed in our vision and our values. We grew that zero to a thousand agents in 18 months with no crazy pyramid scheme, no crazy commission schedule. We just took Coldwell Bankers IC agreement and another big independent, Alan Pinnell's IC agreement, you know, kind of merged the two of them together and started a traditional real estate company based on, you know, um, really people being part of that culture, that vision and that values. It was the vision was guided by the Prince of trust, respect and integrity. We empower people to achieve their dreams. And we had 15 core values. And crazy thing was, is every person that we hired had to sit in with me for about an hour and a half to two hours and hear the whole Intero story, even though in the beginning there wasn't much to it. And then you were either in or you were out and either one was okay. Right. But um, we got uh, Intero is that Italian word, which means whole and complete. So we like to say we're doing more than just real estate with a lot of, a lot of the companies that had came, come up, have, have that kind of like that culture piece, almost like that ninja cultural, culture piece or whatever it was. But when you grew Intero, um, and in 2013, um, I got a call out of the blue from Ron Peltier saying Warren Buffett bought a, bought Prudential and he was looking for a, a, a CEO of the franchise group. And we were going to be the first ones to use the name Berkshire Hathaway. And, uh, I wanted to know if I wanted to do it. I told him, um, he said, don't answer me now. Call me, call you back in a week. Call me back in a week. I said, no, I'm not interested, but thanks so much, Ron. This was a, a nice honor, but I've got an independent company right now that I own. It'd be awkward being the, the, um, the owner of, uh, of, of, of both. And he said, Warren Buffett said, if you accept this job, he'll make that transition possible for you by buying Intero. So I wow. had three partners in Intero. We decided to buy, sell Intero. So on May 14th, May 17th, 2014, I sold Intero Real Estate Services, um, which from a volume standpoint, because our prices were so high, it was the seventh largest real estate company out of 80,000 real estate companies Ooh. at the time from a volume standpoint, right? Because our average sales price was so high. Um, so then I became the the uh, CEO of the brand Berkshire Hathaway Home Services. And that was kind of cool because it was like, hey, Warren Buffett wanted to buy my company, which was cool. And then Warren Buffett wanted me to, to be the CEO of the first company that carried his brand name, Berkshire Hathaway. Um, so th I did that for five years from 2014 to 2019. And in 2019, I was lucky enough to get promoted to be the CEO of the parent company, which is my role right now, um, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services um, uh, or excuse me, Home Services of America, which is you know, big in the title business, big in the um, franchise business with the, with the brand. I have 53 brands actually right now, um, but we have the um, mortgage, title, insurance, brokerage, and franchise. So all five pieces of the puzzle, which grace basically with the the strain on 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 company dollar and things like that. It's great having all those other businesses. Yeah, you know, which which is a terrific thing to have. And that's kind of how you, you, you look at it. You could be cloud-based, you could be agent-based, you could be all the other things. When I'm part of Berkshire Hathaway, my my role is to make money, right? <laughs> for, the, for the shareholders, right? So it's 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 a little bit tougher when you're competing against, you know, companies. This is all public knowledge. And during during COVID, I delivered a billion dollars profit to the bottom line in the same market. My competitor, Compass, lost a billion nine. That's wow. pretty hard to compete against a company that can lose money, right? Yeah. Or other money, uh, other companies that grew, they may have twice as many agents as I would have. But one good mortgage month I make could make more than that giant, the biggest company in the country, right? That had 186,000 agents. But so it's kind of like, what model do you pick? And that's, I know we're going to close the, um, the interview with kind of what does the future hold? But shoot, boy, that's the, that's the rub right now. And that's the tough thing 
for being in the real estate uh, real estate market. But anyway, that's been my that, that was my journey. Okay, um, so I was a top agent um, from 1986 to 1998. I was the number one agent in the um, in Silicon Valley, which is the second largest county in um, wow. Northern California. So I got a chance to. You know, I'm, I'm a real estate guy at heart, you know, totally real estate guy, been a branch manager, been an owner, started companies, and now I'm actually in the executive role. So it's been quite a journey, but it's been a journey that anybody could do. And and, and, and knowing I started out just as a brand new agent in 1985 with a $1 bill in my pocket, you know, <laughs> as broke as you could be. I mean, here's, I mean, I don't know. I, why haven't you done more, man? I mean, come on. I mean, I'm... <laughs> I mean, that is just crazy to me. I love how you say anybody can do it. Um, uh, you know, my heart goes to really quickly, like, um, you know, recruiting is such a, it, people are what move the business, right? Recruiting the best talent and hearing that you recruited a thousand people to Intero in 18 months. Like, what would you share is like the way to attract and retain talent in, in your experience? Because I'm trying to do that at my yeah. company. I know, Cody, you're trying to do that. Yeah. yeah. You know, you, you've you've got to you've got to add value. You got to be adding value. Well, you what well, one thing you can do, you give everybody a hundred percent and not charge them anything, and you'll get some people that want to come. Right. In fact, there's a lot of cloud-based companies that are really growing like that, and that is one way to do it. What you have, what what I believe you have to do is you have to be adding value. Okay, you have to be adding value to them um, through your culture, through your continuous learning, continuous training, continuous improvement. You know, you've got to be adding that. You got to you got to connect with them. And then, you know, you'll have some really good people that you helped along the way and they'll just leave to go somewhere else where they think they can get a little bit more or where they're having certain sort of turmoil in their life and they need a change and, and, and those things happen. So my, what I would say is you have to be adding value to them and showing them away. I would get an agent all the time. They're, they're in Silicon Valley. They're, they're, they're leaving and um, they're leaving because they want to hire splits somewhere else. And then I have to take them through the steps. And um, if I couldn't make them make more money with me, well, then they probably should leave. Right. But um, usually there's a way by getting them to do more transactions. I actually have a, you know, because I'm, I'm into recruiting and things like that. I don't know how familiar you are with NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming. Yeah. But I had an NLP line on with a true story on how I could take an agent that was going to leave to go to another company for X price or it would stay with us for this price and how I could talk to her about if she could do one more deal or two more deals after she's told me she could probably do one more deal per month if she was doing that. So I would say you got to have every company that does it, you need to have your own business strategy um, coaching. Like Cody, what's the name of your company? Acre Brothers Realty Team. Acre, Acre Brothers Realty Business Strategy Coaching Program. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's not Ninja. It's not Tom Ferry. It's not Buffini. It's not Mike Ferry. It's the um, Cody's business strategy coaching program and you get those people in there and you move their business by what you're sharing with them um that's where i saw you had a chance to build it i also taught at the community college and so i have like 100 200 300 people coming through my class which was one of the first smart yeah you know, to get a real estate license. So that was big too. So I'm, I'm, I'm blabbing a bit, but I think you no. needed that kind of like that background. Yeah. Super powerful. Like the emotions of losing a top producer, it feels like the, one of the biggest frustrations for all of us is we spend all this effort building up somebody and then they leave because they feel they can get a better split somewhere else. D does that not affect you? Like how have you controlled your emotions when people leave you when you've invested and they're believing something that's not, yeah, really it, yeah, good, great question. And, and it, it's a punch in the gut, right? But I always go back. I have these certain things that get my mindset straight every morning that I do, part of my routine. And one of them is to read the, a poem by Rudyard Kipling. If you can hmm. keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for their doubting too. But there's a great line in there. And it, uh, what was your, give me your question again, and I'll give you that line back because I got kind of off track for a no, second. No, uh, yeah, my question was like, how do you control your emotions when like the yes, top producer uses you? Yeah, perfect. Yep. So I, I, 
and I'll go to the Kipling poem. And there's a line in that says, if you can make one heap of all your winnings at risk at one turn of pitch and toss and lose and start again at your beginnings and never breathe a word about your loss. Okay. Uh, you just have to kind of, you got to reprogram yourself to not take it personal and to use that energy to go out and hire somebody else. Mm. That'd be mine. What else do you do in your morning routine? I'm just, you, you're managing 53 brands. I think you said like, I mean, I'm just blown yeah. away. I don't, I can barely manage the executive team. Well, I have at Reminder I Media. Got, like, I what do you do? Yeah. I got leaders in every one of those brands that run their brands, but like sure. Long <laughs> Foster, uh, Houlihan Lawrence, uh, Long Properties, Intero, uh, Kentwood in, 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 in there, Adina, a big company in Minneapolis, you know, so there's all these different companies and then a whole bunch of Berkshire Hathaway ones in there too. But um, so routine, um, I, my routine has always, always been this. When you, when I was a brand new agent with that $1 pill in my, my pocket, I wake up every morning scared and wondering if I could get through the day and what the day had to offer. And as I studied successful people, I found that I had to program myself to be fearless. So I set up a routine that would help me be fearless. Okay. And so I'm, you know, basically, um, I don't know if you if you did any heard me uh, talk on anything else, but I talk about meds. You familiar with the term meds? I, I think I've heard you talk about it before. Like M stands for meditation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So those are like little keystone habits: meditation, exercise, diet, and sleep. Keystone habits that create small wins. And a small win is a great thing because there's a lot of research behind it. But once a small win is accomplished, forces are set in motion that favor another small win. And mm. those. They'll, they'll they'll help trans they'll help you transfer to bigger wins and 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 get you to belief. So essentially, what I had to do when I started out there was change my mindset and make my routine part of it. And I just continued that that on. So I have a morning routine and I have an evening routine, and that's probably more than anything else. The discipline to that routine has been my claim to fame. Okay, because I'm gonna get my I'm gonna get my head today straight. I'm gonna wake up early. Okay, I typically go to Starbucks with my dog. All right, and on the way to on the way to Starbucks, I'm either going to have quiet meditation or I'm gonna listen to myself reading out loud in my phone that Kipling poem, that Ogmandino poem, the um, uh, Think and Grow Rich um, uh, confidence formula. Then I'm gonna actually read my entire business plan. Okay. Hear myself saying it, or I'm actually going to read it. It depends upon where, where I am. So I'm going to get that meditation piece in Then I'm going to exercise. Okay. I'm going to get a workout in which, you know, there's so many benefits to exercise, right? The endorphins and, and those types of things. Okay. Um, then I'm going to eat a healthy breakfast and then I'm going to kind of like start my day, right? I'm actually going to write in my success journal, 10 things that made me happy, uh, 10, 10 things I'm grateful for, three things that made me happy in the last 24 hours. And then I'm going to program the non-conscious portion of my brain by writing something out 25 times. I used to say I am earning X number of dollars or more in the next 12 months. Now I just write out, I have perfect health, wealth, and fitness and wow. do that. So then I'm ready for the day. OK, I'm ready for the day. And uh, in the wintertime, that workout routine um, includes going in my pool, which is it's not heated. So it's cool. pretty cold. You get that kind of like that cold plunge piece. This um, what I do in the pool is I put fins on workout fins on and hand fins on and I will tread water for 30 minutes. Now, I'll do that until the water gets so cold that I can't stay in there for 30 minutes. And no, are you kidding me? Like You're doing that? Are you doing that every day, Gino? 30 minutes every That's in yeah. that's every insane. Day. That's something. Yeah. You know, I can't, if I'm like I'm going to travel in October a ton, so I got to check with the hotel and see if they've got a pool. If they've got a pool, then I can do it there. If not, I've got a different routine for when I'm traveling, right? But um uh that's that's kind of like the key. Um and then I got an evening routine's pretty cool too, you know. Eat a healthy breakfast. If you want to stabilize your glucose level, you want to do some sort of activity right after you've eaten. So now um, what I just recently started doing, I got this swing trainer because I hadn't golfed in like three years. Went golfing. Uh, my, my daughter got married um, August 24th, went golfing. And after Congrats. nine 
my back was stiff. So now I just take the swing trainer in my backyard and I'll practice my swing and I'll just swing for like five or 10 minutes after I ate. So I made it part of my routine because I found I never do things unless they're part of a routine. Okay. Um, I didn't tell you in, in the, well, some other time we can just actually have a whole podcast on just routine. And, uh, and dude, I would love that. I'm because there's too, I'll waste too, not waste too much time, but I think it'll spend too much time telling you on it. But there's some great things that your everyone in your audience can can benefit from hearing that routine piece. Oh man, I would love to. Um, yeah, we'll have to do a whole nother podcast on that because um, just hearing like. I just think about myself and it's the excuses I make. I'm running Reminder Media and it's easy to go, oh, I'm doing a lot. And then you hear yourself and just your morning routine and all the things you're you're working on and all the brands that you're running. And you go, yeah, the belief that you, like you have so much more in you than you even realize you have because there are people out there working 10x harder than you are and are so more disciplined. I, re- I think of like Jocko Willenick, who wrote Extreme Ownership, mm-hmm. and he talks about if you want more freedom in your life, you have to have more discipline because with discipline, yes. it opens up time on your calendar, which in essence gives you more freedom. And it feels like every part of your day is regimented. Would you say that you are basically down to your calendar of like everything is scheduled for you or how do you run to be effective during the day? Yeah, I try to try to follow a schedule. In fact, if Dietra was on this call and you said, Dietra, you know, if you emailed her right now, she what's her job? She's like, my job is to keep Gino on his schedule. If I stay on my schedule, that's the best. That's the best possible thing. Right. And certainly it never goes perfect. But I have a system for that where you write down the seven most important things you're going to do that day and you put time frames by it and you try to finish the task within that time frame. You could put buffers in your schedule because sometimes things come up. But if I have a task, if I'm on with you for an hour, I want to be on with you for an hour and then I'm off, right? That mm-hmm. kind of thing. Uh, that, that, that type of stuff. So it, um, I've got to tell you, you know, I work from home now a great deal and I'm nowhere as near as structured as I was when I worked at the office and everything was, was there. It just, uh, it's probably just called life. Yeah. It's, yeah, I'm curious to, um, you know, kind of uh, switch subjects a little bit onto this whole leadership because you're leading so many people, but really what I want to ask you is, you know, the whole industry has been hit by this lawsuit you know, issue, um, which it is, you're probably tired of hearing about it, but, um, you know, you guys got hit with a major, uh, amount of money to pay. You're yeah, no, they, well, they look at it, extortion. All they do is they just look at you and they say, we want to take you down to bankruptcy and how much can you pay? But because we ran a better company than everybody else, we pay the most. Yep. Totally, I, I totally, not how many agents you had, not how many transactions you had. It's all on your ability to pay. It seemed, it seemed that way, man. It really did seem crazy that like, if you look at the different firms and what they had to pay and the fact that you guys had to pay the amount you did, I'm curious though, like, how do you lead through that? How do you lead through a time of turmoil like that and keep, keep the team aligned, the brand aligned? Like what, you know, kind of like a time of war, even your dog's telling us it's a time of war yeah. right now. We're like, yeah. how do you lead through like this? Daughter, yeah. <laughs> My, my daughter's dog was, was yep. getting fired up when you said uh, the lawsuit. In yeah. any case, you know, here's what I'm doing, uh, guys. What I'm doing is I'm getting out there in the field, okay? Like in, uh, I'm going to give you my October schedule. And okay. you said, what am I doing? This is what Gino's doing. Whether it's right or wrong, who knows, right? But this is what I'm doing. I'm going to be out there with the people. And you know what my talk's going to be? A lot of it's going to be mindset and routine because that's really what they need right now. So get this. October 2 to 4, I'm in Chicago. I'll hit at least five companies. Um, 9 to 11, I'm in Montana. 14th and 15th, I'm in California. 16th and 18th, I'm in Tennessee. 19th and 22nd, I'm in Pennsylvania. 23rd and 24th, I'm in Texas. So one, two, three, four, five, six six different parts of the country I'm going to be in, in person, firing people up, trying to get them on their routine, trying to get them to be positive, you know, um, trying to get them to be more disciplined, right? 
just those types of things. When you talk about discipline, what popped into my head was, I, I have a, a little line I like to say, the pain of discipline weighs ounces, the pain of regret weighs tons. So it's, mm. you know, you know, it's kind of like Ali, you know, suffer now and then live the rest of your life as a champion when you can't, if you can figure out, if you can't figure out if you can do more, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, so good, man. So good. I feel like I'm asking all the questions. I have so many more I want to ask, but I want to give you guys a chance <laughs> to to ask questions that you would yeah. want to know. So you've like obviously started a lot of companies. You've been the leader and you've got to give a vision to people. So, and the biggest part is communicating that. So what is maybe the number one thing you look for in a vision to communicate to people? Um, well, I, the vision, I, I just need to tell them what my vision is. My vision is I help people achieve their goals faster than they would in my absence. That's my vision. Okay. And so, um, you know, or what, whatever the vision of, of, of the uh, company would be like in tarot, you know, guided by principles of trust, respect, and integrity. We empower people to achieve their dreams, whether it's a realtor coming into the business with the dream of building a business, or it's the homeowner of the American dream of owning a home. So that's a Cody. Hopefully that's kind of like yeah. what I, what you were looking for there, pal. Yep. Yep. I yeah. just, uh, cause, um, leading a group of people, you've got to have a vision and you've got to be able to communicate it well. And you've obviously done that and been very successful at that. So I was curious. How do you get it to resonate through the ranks though? And not just be words on paper or like slogans on a brochure. Like how do you try to facilitate it down through an organization? Yeah. For, for me, it was, I was telling the story every uh, tw two times per week, all the time, telling the story. You know, I, I when I first went to um, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, the brand, I asked the communication guys, so what's our vision? He didn't know it. It was written somewhere on the wall, but he didn't know it, right? People don't know it. Most people don't even know what's the, what's the, what's the vision of your company? You know, what, what are the 15 values? Uh, what, what are they? You know, we, we would have it down to where we got it. You know, you, you, you get, you, the leader knows it, then the managers need to know it, right? The managers need to know it. There was a guy, I remember when we started in Tara, we created the first 10 values on it, kind of knew what they were, but kind of like they were just up there on the wall. And Terry Meyer had one of our leadership meetings says, okay, everybody, let's write down what in order, what the 10 values were. And I was like, wow, hmm. I had to ponder. And I, I made a commitment then that that would never happen again. And then of course, when you do them all, all the time, you know, so I created the culture within the vision. I took the, the vision statement of Intero, guided by the principle of trust, respect, and integrity. We empower people to achieve their dreams. Then I took the 15 values and took a page out of um, uh, the great John Wooden coach mm. and created a pyramid out of it. But get this, you'll like this, guys. I wrapped the pyramid in, in, uh, in, in up one side down the other side and across the bottom in disciplined thought on one side, disciplined um, people on the other side and disciplined action. And the idea is when you have disciplined thought, you don't need a hierarchy. You have disciplined people, you don't need bureaucracy. You have disciplined action, you don't need excessive controls. And when you take a culture of discipline with the ethic of entrepreneurship, that's where you get the magical alchemy of success and sustained results right? Sustained results. Anybody can have one good year, right? But to do it, you know, in tarot, when I was there, had 12 consecutive years of organic market share growth. Wow. And it happened by accident, but it was a grind to get it to happen, right? And everybody had to work really hard to get that to go. Um, but in any case, that's um, a Cody. Hey, that's, everybody should rewind that. Guys. What's that? I said everybody should rewind that and listen to the last two minutes again. That was so powerful. How do you – like the hardest thing I think is translating um, that culture of discipline and accountability – to um, down to your people and not putting up with mediocrity. Like I know, uh, Cody, like you and Steve in there at the team, you guys have gone through a journey of like, do I get rid of these low producers? And Gino, you said in six months at Intero, if you don't close the deal, you're out. So how do you, like, do you have zero tolerance for mediocrity? Do people just know, don't mess around with Gino because he will cut you in an instance? Like what's that? <laughs> 
how do you balance radical candor and being yeah. going at people and stuff? Yeah. In my early stage, in my first management job at Contempo Realty, where I had 23 agents, this will blow your mind, had 23 agents, average age was 26 years old. This is 1989. Wow. And 17 of them made $100,000, which in Silicon Valley today, that'd be like 17 of the 23 agents made $2 million. Right. Holy cow. The are. And there I had no tolerance. All right. Um, which I don't know if that's good or that's bad. If you're trying to just help people and, and, and win it is, but you still need to be nice. There was a, a wall street, uh, a business journal article where they interviewed me in 1991. Okay. Which was a recession year. And I made like $500,000 that year more than like anybody and I, it was not 1991 right yeah and oh. and um, they interviewed and I, I said in there i said i just I, I i think i said this line economic darwinism okay and i said i just fired my top my my bottom three producers right and my mom called me up and she said i was all proud of this stupid article right because it made me look i thought it made me look good and she yes. goes you didn't seem very nice in that Right. Mm -hmm. So I had the hardcore piece, especially with the young and very impressionable ones. But you got to be you just got to be careful. And then you're going to get the guys that already know it all and sometimes are doing pretty good. OK. And that's a tough one, too. And I've got a, a line for that one, too, that you might want to just remember. It goes like this. Smugness comes before arrogance and arrogance is the precursor to disaster. Once you think you know it all, your slide to mediocrity has already begun, mm, right? right? Now, the NFL has got that right now. You hear anybody being interviewed, we got to improve. We got to get better. We got to improve. We got to get better. Even the, the guy from the, the Cowboys, um, a CD Lamb or whatever, yeah. Yeah. when he outed about a week ago, he called himself out. I thought that was pretty cool because in the old days, that didn't happen. Man, that yeah, it's so yeah, so good. That's been yeah one of the hardest struggles for us at Reminder Media and growing our business. And then I know for Acre Brothers Realty, and then we just talk to so many uh, you know teen leaders and stuff. It's like, do I put up with the mediocre producer, but yet I'm trying to build people and grow them in that fine line of having hardcore, radical, candor conversations? And it's like the golden nugget. Like you think of how you're leading today. As you know, overseeing all these leaders and brands, you're getting in the trench. You're going down to the people that like servant leadership, getting next to the people because you can't help the people if you're not next to them. And I just think that's a powerful thing to point out. Yeah. Okay. Great. And that is a powerful thing. Cody, how many people in your company? Uh, we have 14. Four, see, that's perfect, Cody. You can control that. Yeah. You can stand for no mediocrity. Andy C., who is one of my Intero guys, all right? Uh, you interview him sometime. Great guy. Yes, he's, he's amazing. 15 people on his team, okay? Andy C., um, you know, he doesn't have to have any – you won't last on his team. I could do it with the 23-agent office, hmm. right? You can do it. You can't do it. It's hard. You can't do it with 78,000 people. And you need them all, you know, right. you need them all. But at Cody, a team, you can just freaking crush it because you can have a meeting with them every single morning, yep. have them go through part of their, part of your routine becomes part of their routine, right? Right. They're doing their affirmations with you. They're doing their script practice. They're getting their heads straight. They're writing out their goals and, 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 and things like that because it's just 14 of them. That's great. Cause I asked Andy, I, I, I go, Andy, what type of accountability do you have? Um, so I don't have any accountability because of the people that I've hand the on the unaccountable ones just get out. They're, they're not going to be there, you know. Mm -hmm. And usually that's what accountability does; it filters those out. Yeah, we made a, a switch because we were um, last year. I think the highest point we had like twenty twenty three agents, uh, mm -hmm. and then we slowly started to realize like that's not the way we wanted to go. Uh, so yeah. we started to trim up and probably even a little bit more as far as standards, we're going to up our standards on what should happen. Right. And, 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 and still, you know, under 30, you could handle it because you're coming into the same office, right? Right. Yeah. 
So Cody, you, you, you can, you know, Hey, if I, if I had to start my career over again, mm-hmm. I never would even got into management. I would have just had the Gino Blafari team of like <laughs> you said, 14 killers, yeah. Not, you know, yeah. wonderful, ethical, <laughs> hardworking, great people, you know, but th- that's, that's what I w- would have done. You know, that's if I had, if you said, Oh, if you did it all over, what would you do? You know, that's but okay. what I was able to do was another thing that gives me great pleasure is with this platform, I can impact more people, right? Just like how you guys are doing on your podcast, you're impacting people. You know, you're, you're like, I mean, this is great. Here's a couple cool, cool young dudes working <laughs> hard. Here we are. I'm doing my podcast. You know, that's beautiful. People love that. You know, um, so, I don't know if I would say we're cool, but I'll take it. I will take it. No. Yeah, uh, what was that one? That one author, the the Navy SEAL guy. I'll give you a, a quote, quote of his. This is what you. I can see you guys doing this every day before you get on the on the on the podcast. I'm feeling good. I'm looking good. I ought to be in Hollywood, right? That was yeah. all. Over that was his little <laughs> affirmation. He would say, "How you doing? Feeling good. I'm looking good. I ought to be in Hollywood." Yeah. Yeah. What a great affirmation. So, oh man, this has been so valuable. Um, so, I would love to ask you. You know, the industry's changing. Um, it's always changing, right? But if you were to try to give people advice of where they should double down or focus. Um, with everything that's happening with AI and you got the politics and you got commission changes, you got all this going on. What would you uh, share with them as we close out? I would say just get to the consumer, get to your, get to your, uh, for agents, if it's, I mean, agents can create those relationships, get to the consumer. Mm-hmm. Okay. And create relationships that whenever they think of doing anything in real estate, they only call you. So you don't have to ever buy a lead. Okay. Mm. You know, sometimes when you got a big team and you got to present them leads, you do buy leads because you're giving them leads and then your margins getting squeezed down and things like that. But I would, t- um, that's why I'm doing the mindset talk and creating the routine to get out there to be more productive. But, um, you know, it's, uh, it's a relationship business. And as far as all these changes for a realtor, a good realtor, it's good stuff. Mm. It's good stuff. You got to get them to sign a buyer broker agreement. Great. And you get to represent them. Then you can show them how great you were. I, when I first started, I just did, I only had buyers because I didn't know any sellers. Right. Mm-hmm. And I had a buyer presentation because in 1985, interest rates were 14%. And you had to have a buyer's presentation. I got my buyer's presentation. That poor buyer spent two hours with me before we, before we went out. I took him through the analysis of home ownership. I told him, here's your sales price. Here's your initial investment. I explained everything that would happen on a loan. I made sure I just, I tell the agents this, make sure you know mortgage better than your lender does. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'd explain to them what their, how their, their, their property taxes work. I, I'd explain to them how their interests worked. I'd explain to them how the tax, without giving legal or tax advice, I'd always say, learn, you know, go see your accountant, but I would show them, I'd pull out the IRS, you know, dot com and come up and show them exactly what their tax savings was if they were owning this house. You know, explain to them what appreciation was. Go through so much stuff. Go through every single line on that contract. Go through the agency disclosure. Explain to them I had a fiduciary duty to disclose to you what agency is because the California Civil Code 1102 requires me to do this. Now, nobody else was doing it, so I was a little bit better, right? So what I would say is take it, you know, Cody, with your great team that you have, take it as a craft. It's a craft, and you want to be best ever at it. And if you're best at, ever at it, if you're Andy C, okay, Andy C put 12 million bucks in his pocket. His team was 24, but he put 12 million in his pocket, you know? Get out of here, man. Uh, Andy, Andy, you want to be the CEO of, of Home Services America? No, I couldn't take the pay cut, Gino. Um, <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it, it, that's the it, realtors, they, they got, let's just, you know, get the right mindset, you know, um, you know, Mike Ferry, right? Show up, pay yeah. attention, tell the truth. Don't be attached to the result. I'd add, add value, add value, add value to your customers and get out there. I'd be, I'd meet my customers. I'd take people from my CEO 
agents out there. I take my C, COI, uh, Center of Influence. I take someone out every day, once a week, twice a week, three times a week, four times, however many you do it, and just meet them for coffee. Hey, so what do you do? How'd you get started? Where are you originally from? What's your, what's your current family situation? What was your family situation growing up? Were you active in school? Give me a memory from your childhood that stands out. Who from your childhood had the biggest impact on you? You know, um, what did what, you learn from them? Look at your life as a radar scope. There'll be highs, there'll be lows. Give me one of the highs. What does that tell you about yourself? Give me one of the lows. I mean, that, I have 18 connecting questions. You know how like the, the um, ninja, ninja has the four, right? The five, the four or five questions. I have 18 questions. When I was done with them, their Superman ear would hear <laughs> So one of their neighbors that was going to sell their house and call me. So that's what I would say to you guys. You know, Cody, you're in a great spot. You got a great, you probably have a great team. There's only 14 of you. So you can be 14 thoroughbreds and everybody can be improving. And, you know, every single week you need to be having them declare to you, what am I doing to improve so I'm better this week than I was last week? Love it. Mm. That's so Gino. good. Ooh. It has been an honor having you yeah, on. Seriously. Before we close out, uh, please let people know how they can connect with you. Uh, yeah, it's um, uh, Gino Blafari at um, homeservices.com, you know, G-I-N-O-B-L-E-F-A-R-I at homeservices.com. And also, too, um, uh, I set you guys up on my blog, right? You get my blog now? Because they, they went would want to sign up for my blog. And because I do a Thursday Thoughts on Leadership, which is it's not a commercial for anything. It's just, in, in fact, this, what what came out last night was October 1, first day of the new year, right? Get your business because we have the 90-day cycle. So yep. make sure you're getting your routine down there. But in any case, that's how they could get hold of me if they wanted to. And, yeah. also, you know, call the podcast. Those guys will connect you. We will make sure to include those links in the show notes of this episode. So wherever you're listening to this, uh, whether you're watching on YouTube or you're listening to it in a podcast player, we'll have the show notes there. You can also get everything over at staypaidpodcast.com. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, if you like this episode and want to show your support, uh, head on over to Apple Podcasts. Leave a review specifically about this amazing interview uh, over at Apple Podcasts or on Spotify. And we'll make sure to read it here on the show. If you want to get hold of me and Luke, you can email us at podcast.remindermedia.com. And of course, you can message and follow us on Instagram. We are at Stay Paid Podcast. For this episode of Stay Paid, I'm Joshua Syke. Guys, I'm Luke Acre. Gino, it is an honor, like Josh said. And thank you so much. I feel grateful having your wisdom and just I learned so much. I would encourage people, hey, as you've listened to this, go rewind it. Listen to it a couple of times because there's so many golden nuggets in there. And you're hearing from a true legend today. Uh, so it's been an honor. Here's my action item for you because you don't change your life if you don't take action. And so you've heard a lot of golden nuggets. But if you notice something about Gino, I mean, the guy is so intentional and it starts with his routines. And he probably said that five, six, seven times throughout this podcast in such a good way of you have to be intentional about what you're doing and not just let life just blow you like a leaf in the wind. You have to know what you're doing. It starts with your morning routine. And think about what he said with the whole meds meditation, exercise, diet, and sleep. Start there. That is a very achievable action item for you of meditating every morning, getting some exercise in, eating a healthy diet, and making sure you're getting your sleep in. Remember the difference between top producers and mediocre producers in every business is top producers take action. Take action on that today. 